Hi guys, it's Lindsay, and I just completed two months of a no buy and documenting my outfits for a little bit under 75 days, but I really tried my best to participate in the 75 hard style challenge started by Old Loser in Brooklyn or Mandy on Instagram and TikTok. I really think it's an amazing idea if you are someone that needs some encouragement to get dressed every day or a kick in the butt when it comes to impulse buying and maybe buying and returning. I feel like those were the two issues that I faced when it came to starting this challenge is that when I would go to flea markets or thrifting, I would impulse buy because it's, it's a one of a kind item. If I leave, it'll disappear. And I also was in the habit of like ordering items on the real real and returning them and paying a restocking fee every single time that I did that. And so when I started this challenge, I felt like I really needed a reset and it absolutely provided me that. So if that's something that you're looking for, I would highly suggest it or even to just do it for 30 days because 75 days is a really long time. I only made it to about 50 or 55 when it came to documenting my outfits and I think that also has to do with the fact I was documenting them publicly. I think if I was just taking the outfit photos for only myself it would have taken some of the pressure off because I like to have a clean apartment when I'm taking my photos or videos and towards the end of the challenge I was going through a lot personally and it was just hard to pull myself together, pull the apartment together, think of an outfit that isn't too similar to what I wore the past few days. Even though in real life, I totally outfit repeat. And so I'd say for the last, yeah, 20 days of the challenge, I just rewore outfits that I came up with during the challenge that I really liked and that felt true to me and just didn't document them. So if you're wondering like where those days went or if I didn't like announce why it ended, I was just going through a family emergency and, and needed personal time off. But overall, I would say this experience was super positive. I learned a lot about myself and my personal style. I learned that I definitely feel most comfortable in basics and know what I like. I, I enjoyed wearing the clothes that I own. I'm very lucky to have a great collection of basics. I know what shoes I like and they're loafers and it's jeans and it's a white t-shirt and I, I just embraced that and felt really comfortable with what I have. I feel like I was most surprised by how content I felt. I would say the first two weeks, you're just getting yourself out of the habit of like opening Depop when you're bored or actually clicking on Instagram ads or TikTok shop ads, whatever it is that gets you. Once you're out of that habit, I feel like I just felt content and I, I enjoyed getting dressed every day because I wasn't trying to complete the outfit with something I don't have. Like I was just accepting the outfit for what it is in front of me. I feel like I gained time back. I felt more present. I wasn't just like constantly searching for something that either doesn't exist or I'm gonna order and then forget about and move on to the next thing. And it, it really is just a cycle. And even if you're not buying expensive items, it does just take up some of your brain space. And so I did get some questions and someone asked me what I did to replace the serotonin boost from buying stuff. And for me personally, I replaced it with reading in my extra free time. And I also started playing the New York Times puzzles. And I know that that might not be everyone's thing, but completing the daily mini once a day is something I look forward to. It absolutely gives me a serotonin boost when I finish it. If you were someone that likes to scroll on a shopping app when you're bored, try and find yourself like a phone game that's really fun and kind of mindless to kind of scratch the same itch. That's what I personally did um, and it definitely worked. How to hold yourself accountable for doing a no buy is definitely to tell people around you and maybe even encourage them to join you. I got very lucky that my sister and my boyfriend, so like the people I talked to the most, decided to join it in with me and my sister would send me her outfits and then my boyfriend and I would talk about clothes we wanna buy and we both usually would go to flea markets together and so it was nice holding each other accountable to not cave in because in the beginning I definitely was like still looking at Depop and wanting to buy stuff and they would just tell me like straight up, 
you don't need that or it's not that cute. It's not worth it. Whatever I needed to just be like, yeah, you're right. Can you estimate how much you potentially saved or like, did you reallocate those funds elsewhere? I thought this was a really interesting question because I do feel like it would be easy to move your spending elsewhere, but I actually didn't. I, I think I bought like one brow gel that I needed to repurchase. But other than that, I, I really just, took a complete break, but I could easily spend like $100 at the Rose Bowl, maybe $200 at the Essence sale. I saw there was a Reformation sample sale in LA that I didn't go to. And I've been to like the last few for the last few years and I, I didn't do it. Um, but did I save money in general? No, because I had to take Sammy to the vet to do a dental cleaning. And my boyfriend saved a lot of money doing this challenge too, but he got his car towed. So both of us ended up spending more than we would have spent if we were just in our typical shopping habits. Um, but that is just the universe keeping us humble. Did you find that you had large gaps in your closet? And if so, like what to do about them? Um, I feel like I did acknowledge this in some of the TikToks, maybe you might've seen this, but I discovered that all of my everyday shoes are black and that most of my everyday bags are black. And I guess I didn't notice that when I was getting dressed maybe three or four times during the week and like wearing athleisure on the other days, but it really started to bother me. And so that was actually the first thing that I bought when this challenge ended was a pair of red ballet flats and a brown everyday bag. I have the ballet flats because I actually ordered them five days before the challenge ended. I think I ordered them, what, on day like 69. I just, I was like, you know, it's almost over. If I wait a week, what difference is it gonna make? Uh, and so I'm gonna, I'm totally honest about that. I, I definitely broke the challenge at, at the last week. I bought red ballet flats, brown sandals, and a brown bag. So I know that is a lot, but I've been thinking about these pieces for 75 days. Um, so I, I've like never felt more confident in these pieces that I have chosen to purchase. And the delayed gratification makes it even sweeter. Like I'm so excited to wear these brown fisherman sandals. I've never owned anything like them. They look really comfortable and I think they would look great with everything that I already own in my closet. I don't have to like go out of my way to buy anything to wear with them. For someone that used to impulse buy, it feels good to feel very confident. Are you using your accessories differently than before the challenge? I feel like throughout this whole challenge, I felt very bored with my jewelry and my accessories because I pretty much wear the same set of rings and two different pairs of hoops every day. Um, because I really like fine jewelry, I don't wanna buy a costume or plated pieces and have them just essentially rot um, with time. I feel like anything I bought that's plated, give it two years and it looks like actually like terrible, um, but because I couldn't shop, I started wearing more of my plated and costume pieces more and just accepting that they have a shorter lifespan. So like this is a plated ring. I have on like a thicker plated band and it's fun. I feel like wearing plated is a good way to test out a style before you buy it in solid gold. Like there is this necklace style that I really want that can hold different charms. And in solid gold, it's like anywhere from one to $2,000. And that's a lot to spend on a necklace that that I've never seen before, I've never held before, and there's a pretty similar dupe on Etsy. So that's something that I've been thinking about throughout this whole challenge and felt hesitation towards because it's plated. But if in the long run, I realize that I love it and the other one I want to buy in a year from now, I think it'll be worth it. I don't know if that answered the question, I just went on kind of a tangent. Do you think it will affect your future shopping patterns? 100% because it already has. I have no desire to buy something that I haven't thought about because I know that the desire is fleeting. Like the emotion that you feel when you see something is final sale or it's on the real reel and it has a bunch of likes so you know someone's gonna buy it. Um, I, I feel like less, less drawn to that and more drawn to filling the gaps in my wardrobe that I've been thinking about and investing in higher quality items. If I come across something that I've wanted for a really long time, I'll buy it. But other than that, I feel like I'm over impulse buying and buying for events and buying because someone was nice to me at a store, you know? Do you think you could go an entire year without buying new clothes? Yes. 
if I could buy secondhand clothes. And I know that that is a stretch, but I feel like there's a big difference between not shopping period and not shopping fast fashion because I pretty much already do that. Like I haven't been inside of a Zara, an H&M, a Forever 21 in many, many, many years. Uh, and I, I don't buy from Princess Polly. I would never work with any of those brands. So I pretty exclusively will shop slow fashion brands like when they're on sale or from the real real. The things that I buy firsthand are usually shoes, underwear, some stuff from Reformation just because like they have a chokehold on me. What was the hardest thing during this challenge? I would say seeing my saves on either Etsy or Depop or eBay, the real real get purchased was hard, but it was something I knew would happen. And I, I hope those pieces are happy in their new homes. It just, it wasn't meant to be. You, you come to terms with that. Like I know a long time ago, like prior to this challenge, three months ago, me uh, would have like felt some like stress about that, about those pieces disappearing. But I just feel like less attachment to <laughs> shopping in general, which is cool. Did you find it impacted your ability to make content or videos? This is such a good question because I feel like a lot of people maybe want to post outfit videos or become an influencer, but maybe feel like they don't have enough clothes or the right clothes. I think you'd be surprised at the audience that just wants to see normal people wear normal clothes that can be easily recreated that don't feel like they're made for Instagram. And so I was like pleasantly surprised by the comments and messages I got and seeing the people taking part in this challenge and what they decided to wear every day. It really like inspired me to keep going and I really enjoyed it. After your no buy, what is your perception of your wardrobe now? I feel very at peace with it. Like I said before, I, I have accepted that I like wearing basics. I know what colors I like. I think with a couple tweaks of adding in some brown shoes, a brown bag, pop of red here and there, I feel like really happy with my closet. And so we'll see how the rest of this year goes, but I don't see myself impulse shopping as much now that I've done this challenge. And lastly, would you do it again? I feel like no, I'm gonna be completely honest. I, I would do a 30 day version, but 75 days is just way too long. I feel like I definitely got burnt out and that's why I gave up. I would recommend this challenge if you are considering doing it. I, I feel like it was an overwhelmingly positive experience. So thank you to Mandy for creating this challenge and thank you for watching and hanging out with me. I will see you guys with some new videos very soon and hopefully my voice will sound better. I've just like, I've hit my limit of communicating. Bye guys.